If you're interested in changing careers into data analytics, you want to become a data analyst or the mythical data scientist, know that data cleaning is a fundamental skill of the analytics professional. In this video, I will be going over a real world data project that you can do and it's 100% free. It uses data provided by US governmental agencies. You can download it and you can go through the project using Excel or SQL or maybe my favorite, R programming. This project was inspired by my own real world work as an analytics professional, so it's totally legit. And if you are interested in changing careers, this particular project might actually be a really great showcase in your project portfolio to demonstrate to potential hiring managers the skills that you've developed by going through the project. Now, this project has everything you can think of. It has data acquisition, it has data understanding, it has data cleaning, it has exploratory data analysis, and then it has analytics on top of that. You can do as much or as little of this as you would like. And I would suggest that if you're going to make it a part of your project portfolio, do it to the max. And by the way, don't click it just yet, but if you're interested, I do have a video, and it'll be up here, of my top five tips on how to make a data analytics project portfolio really pop to hiring managers. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. So what is it? So this project at base is taking data from the state of Texas in the United States and then marrying it up with data from the US federal government, in particular the US Census Bureau. As with all good analytics projects, you need to have some sort of question that you want to analyze that will guide what data you need, what sort of cleaning you will do, what sort of exploratory data analysis you will do, and eventually whatever sort of analytical insights you might derive out of your work. So in this particular case, what you're gonna be looking at is data from the state of Texas regarding licensed professionals. So in the United States, there are certain types of professions that require you to be licensed in the state in which you operate. So for example, if you are a barber, if you cut people's hair, you need to be licensed to do that. So the state of Texas provides you with lists of all the people that are licensed as professionals in the state, whether they're barbers, massage practitioners, estheticians, all kinds of different professions. So that data is freely available and you can download it. So the question under analysis is this, what sort of demographic factors within the counties of the state of Texas are highly associated with certain professions. So for example, um, let's take estheticians. If you're not familiar, an esthetician is somebody who gives people facials. They take care of your skin. They have to be licensed in the state of Texas to do this work. So one hypothesis you might have is, well, that seems to be like a kind of a luxury service. So maybe what we would see in the data is that esthetician license density is highest in those counties in the state of Texas with the highest amounts of disposable income. That's the kind of thing that you're gonna be working on in this particular project. So first up, let's go see where you can get this data. So here we are in a website from the state of Texas in the United States. And by the way, the links for all this stuff will be down below in the description of this video. So this is the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, right? TDLR here. And what you can see here is a bunch of data files, just a wealth of all kinds of data that you can download and use for this particular data cleaning project. Now, here's what makes it so awesome. Even though all of these CSVs, because that's what you'll typically download as a CSV file from this website, are from the same state regulatory agency in the United States, the data files are typically in different formats. They're not always in the same format. So if you want to do a more exhaustive analysis, so for example, maybe you want to look at multiple professions simultaneously to see if there are clusters of certain types of professions that tend to congregate or tend to be quite dense, I should say, <laughs> not congregate, <laughs> quite dense in a particular county for, with particular types of characteristics inside the state of Texas, then this is a great project for you because the files are all in different formats, which is very, very common, by the way, in the real world. So you can see here we have barbers, which are typically in the United States, professionals that specialize in cutting men's hair. And then we have cosmetologists, which in the United States are folks that specialize in cutting hair, whether 
female or male. Um, and you can see we have electricians and motor, motor fuel, metering and quality. So all kinds of goodness, all kinds of different types of professions and different kinds of data are here from the state of Texas. So let me show you what some of this data looks like. I downloaded a file here from the website that we just saw. And this is the all cosmetologists data file. And what you can see here is, you know, you have license type and license number and, you know, names and counties and all that kind of stuff, right? So you got a bunch of data here. And I'll just scroll over and you can see data. Now this file, as I mentioned earlier, is in a particular format. But if you download the Barber's file from Texas, it's not necessarily guaranteed to be in the same format. The one thing that they all have in common are things like counties, dates, the license type, people's names, addresses, that sort of thing. So all that is goodness because what that does is it gives you real world data to download and to start cleaning and exploring and understand what's going on with the data. Oh, and by the way, if you are brand new to analytics and you're not necessarily quite familiar with this whole process, I have a video tutorial series, it's up here. Don't click it just yet, it's up here. And it is completely devoted to doing exploratory data analysis with Excel. So as you can see here, the data that is provided by the state of Texas is in CSV files, which is very amenable for analysis in Excel. And if you're not familiar with exploratory data analysis, that tutorial can help you out with that. Now remember, the question that you're gonna be entertaining is this idea of given certain characteristics of the county, certain demographic characteristics, right? Like the average age of the people who live in the county, how much the average household income is, what's the educational levels, the racial makeup, all that kind of stuff, which is what you're interested in, right? So for example, if you have a very wealthy, mostly suburban county in Texas, are you more likely to find barbers or are you more likely to find cosmetologists? You know, that sort of thing. This column right here, the county is gonna be extremely important. But what this doesn't provide you is the demographic information. It doesn't provide you the data that you need to characterize, for example, El Paso County. Is it wealthy? Is it predominantly Hispanic? Or is it predominantly Caucasian? You know, that sort of thing. This data doesn't give you that. For that, we need to go to the US federal government and in particular, the US Census Bureau, which provides you that information completely free of charge. The US federal government is an awesome place to get free data data that you can use for your job, which I, I have done personally any number of times, but also it's a great place for you to secure data that you can use for your portfolio projects if you would like. So what we're doing here is getting some data, or I'm gonna demonstrate how to get some data from the US Census Bureau. And these are the folks that characterize what's going on in the United States in terms of the population, right? Their ages, their education level, the racial makeup, incomes, all that sort of thing. There are lots and lots of data files that you can download from the US Census Bureau. In particular, I'm just gonna show you one. There are others that are potentially useful for you as well in this particular data project, but this one's a really good one to start with. And it's called DP03. You navigate to the Census Bureau website, and once again, the link will be down in the description below, and you type in DP03 in the search box, and you wanna pick this one right here, selected economic characteristics. So we click okay on that, and it brings us to a nice little page here where we can start looking through the data. And this website is, it's a bit complicated. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's probably more complicated than it needs to be. They could probably use a UX designer, a user experience designer at the federal government. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and download data from 2018. So, and the data that you want is this one right here. You could use 2019 if you want, but I'm gonna use 2018. So 2018 ACS five-year estimates. In case you're curious, ACS stands for American Community Survey. It's one of the programs, projects of the Census Bureau to characterize what's going on with the US population. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And it says, okay, cool. Right, I now am getting five-year estimates, okay, for 2018. But then I need to actually narrow down the geography because I don't want to worry about the entire United States. I'm just looking at Texas. So I'm going to click on the geos button right here, geos, and I'm going to go to the county level. 
if you're not familiar with the general structure of the United States from a governmental perspective, there's the U.S., the whole enchilada, the whole company, the whole country. <laughs> and then there are the 50 states, right? So Texas is one of the 50 states. And then within states, there are counties. And counties are basically subdivided areas of a particular state. And they have local governments. So there's, a, so there's the state government, the county government, and then there'll be city governments or municipal governments as well. So we're going to look at the county level because county is a very interesting way to characterize chunks of the state. And counties will vary across the state. They're not always the same. So we're going to pick county here. And we don't want everything in the United States. We just want to scroll down and pick up Texas. Okay. And we want all counties in Texas. Boom. Okay. So now we're telling the U.S. Census Bureau that this is the data that we want. And all we need to do is close this down. And it's going to say, okay, look, the table of data that you requested is too big for me to display in the website, but you can download it if you want. So that's what we want to do. We want to download the table of data. And we can see here that we have the five-year estimates and notice that 2018 is checked. And I want CSVs because that's the data, that's the data format that's most amenable for our data analysis. And you can see here that you're going to get, basically you're going to get a zip file, a zip archive with three files inside of it. And I'll just go ahead and download it here. And I get that data and it gets downloaded. Now I've previously already downloaded this data and I want to show you what it looks like. So this is the DP03 data set that I just downloaded from the US Census Bureau. And right away, check this out. So here's column B. Notice this is a data cleaning opportunity because notice in the file that we saw previously from the state of Texas, you just had the name of the county. That was it, that was, that was in the column. But notice here that you have Anderson County, Andrews County, Angelina County, comma, Texas. So data cleaning opportunity, right? You're gonna to need to strip this stuff off and then see if you can marry it up with the data from the other Texas file. For example, are they all formatted the same? Do they, are they all capitalized? Are they all lowercase? You know, that sort of thing. So once again, this is a very, very real world project. This is the kind of thing that you do all the time as an analytics professional. You don't always have the luxury of going against a enterprise data warehouse where all the data's already been cleaned for you and massaged. That's awesome, by the way, when it happens. But a lot of times when you're an analytics professional, you're pulling data down from different sources and you need to clean it and you need to wrangle it. You need to merge it so that you can actually do analyses on it. Now, all of these rest of these columns here are various estimates of economic characteristics of the county. So there is also in that zip file that you will download, there's also a metadata dictionary and it will tell you what each of these columns mean. So for example, let me just expand this one. So this one kind of tells you it's the percentage estimate of the employment status of population 16 years and older in the county. It has a name of DP03 underscore 0001PE. <laughs> so it's a little abstract. So there's also a CSV file in that zip archive that will tell you what each one of these columns means. And that's going to be cool, right? Because once you massage this data and get it so that you can join up the Texas data file with this ACS data file from the U.S. federal government based on county, then you can start doing some interesting things. You can start saying, okay, like how many cosmetologists are in each of the counties? You can group by and then merge them up and then say, okay, which counties have high numbers, relatively speaking, of cosmetologists? And then you look at those and then you say, oh, what kind of economic characteristics do those have in common? High disposable income, racial makeup, educational background, you know, all that kind of stuff. This is a wealth of opportunity for you to develop real analytic skills. And if you'd like to create a representative portfolio project to demonstrate to an analytics hiring manager your data skills. Now, by the way, in the real world, I did exactly this, as I mentioned earlier. This is based on my real world experience as an analytics professional. To do this, I would actually not use Excel. I would not use, probably use SQL either. You could certainly, if you wanted to, load these CSV files into a database and work with them that way. What I typically would use is the R programming language. And that's what I would recommend to you if you're interested in actually taking your analytics game, analytics game up to the next level. R programming is 
awesome, not only for data wrangling, but it's also awesome for doing data visualizations, as well as any analytical technique you can think of, market basket analysis, statistical analysis, machine learning, you name it. So if you're interested, you can check out a video I got up here, which shows you that if you've got Excel skills, learning our programming to do a project like this is actually relatively easy. I know this video has been quite the whirlwind tour. So you can, of course, pause the video, rewind it, play it over and over again. But if you're interested in actually having a downloadable guide to this project, there is a PDF that you can get. So right here, I'm just showing you what it looks like. It essentially contains more information about this project in case you'd like to have that instead of just watching this video over and over again. So if you're interested in getting this PDF guide, there'll be a link down below in the description. It'll take you to a form, you give me your email address, and then I will email you this particular PDF and you can go ahead and get started with the real world data cleaning project. If you want more information on exploratory data analysis with Excel or why learning our programming is easy, check out the videos right here. Also, there's additional resources I've indicated up above as well on the card here. A real world data cleaning project that you could use to seed to start your data analytics project portfolio. If you have any questions, go ahead and just drop a few in the comments and I'll go ahead and respond. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.